So you want to be a surgeon. You might be a student in high school currently, or you may be in medical school, or even a junior doctor, and you are wondering whether surgery is the right fit for you. If you want to know what it takes to become a surgeon and how long it takes, then this is the video for you. Hi, my name is Dr. Tasha, and I have been a surgeon for over 20 years. And here I am going to talk about what you need and how long it takes to become a surgeon. So firstly, you need to go to medical school and that's just a given. In the UK, this takes anything between five to six years, depending on the medical school and whether you are entering as a graduate entry as well. If you are, then it may just take about four years to complete. The course in medical school is usually split into preclinical and clinical years. During the preclinical years, this is the time when you get taught and learn the basics of the various disciplines that make up medicine, such as anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, and so on. In the later years of medical school, you will then enter your clinical years. During this time is when you start to tie in what you have learned in the early years of medical school and apply it to the various medical conditions you will see in real life. In other words, when you become a doctor. During these years, you will learn about the various medical conditions and diseases, how to take a medical history, how to do a clinical examination, and the various investigations you need to do in order to reach a diagnosis. It's not uncommon that these are the years that will help you decide which path of medicine you may want to pursue, whether that is medicine or surgery, or other specialities for that matter. After graduating as a doctor, you will enter the foundation years of training. This is normally two years, so there's FY1 and FY2, and some people actually choose to undertake an extra year during their foundation years. During these years, you will rotate and do a mixture of specialities in medicine, surgery, as well as psychiatry, obstetrics. You might do emergency medicine, GP, amongst others. And you don't normally have a choice in what rotations you get, but it's usually a mixture. After these two years, this is crunch time. This is the time when you have to make a decision as to what speciality you want to eventually pursue, whether that's medicine or surgery. For some, this can be tricky, especially if you are still unsure about which speciality you want to get into. However, if you want to do surgery, then you will need to apply for a core surgical training program entry. So you need to get onto one of these programs. This is usually two years, so that's CT1 and CT2. It is competitive entry and you have to apply to get onto a program. You will be interviewed and you have to pass some rigorous assessment before being accepted into such a program. During these two years, you will rotate through different surgical specialities, of which there are a few. And these are some of them. Upper GI surgery, colorectal surgery, orthopedics, breast surgery, HPB surgery, so that's hepatic biliary surgery, transplant surgery, vascular surgery, cardiothoracic surgery, and so on. During these two years, if you want to progress as a surgical trainee, you need to pass an exam called the MRCS or the Membership of the Royal College of Surgeons exam. This is in the UK. And only once you have passed this, can you become eligible to apply to the specialist surgical training program. This is the higher surgical training program, and it's again, competitive entry meaning you have to apply and you have to be interviewed before getting accepted into this program or the ST specialist training program. So how long is this program? Well, it is six years in duration. And this is the time where you really hone in your craft of being a surgeon within the speciality that you choose. Again, you will rotate through different specialities within that general speciality. That might sound confusing. So let me explain what I did. I wanted to become a breast surgeon, so I trained as a general surgeon. So for me, I went through specialities that did not only include breast surgery, but also colorectal surgery, upper GI surgery, and I actually also did some vascular surgery. If, for example, you wanted to do orthopedic surgery, then you would have rotated through specialities that would include lower limb, so that's hips and knees and feet, upper limb surgery, spinal surgery, and so on. And this is the period where you really get to grips with your eventual chosen subspeciality. I chose breast surgery within the speciality of general surgery. 
Now, before you complete this last part of your training to become a surgeon, you need to pass the final exam, which is called the FRCS or Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons exam. And only after you have passed this, can you become eligible to become a consultant surgeon such as myself. Now, some people may also add additional years to their training by taking time out from their training and do research. This may add an extra two to three years depending on what you do, whether you do an MD or a PhD. So let's count how many years it takes to become a consultant surgeon in your chosen specialty. So medical school is six years, foundation training two years, core training two years, specialist training six years, and extra time for research two to three years. So in total, 16 years if you count medical school, 10 years if you don't, so that's 10 years after you qualify as a doctor, and you can add a few years if you did research. So there you have it, it's a pretty long road. Now, the question is, is it worth it? Well, maybe I can talk about that in another video. I'll see you in the next one.